Are your fish suddenly dropping like flies even though your water test kit says everything's fine? Might be chlorine poisoning from your tap water, so keep watching to learn the symptoms and how to treat it. Hi, I'm a gamer's wife here with practical and proven tips to help busy aquarists like you. And recently, I made the classic beginner mistake. Totally forgot to put water conditioner in my tap water to get rid of that chlorine, which is super deadly to fish. In fact, I remember watching Zenzo from Tozawa Tanks talk about doing the same thing while doing water changes in his fish room. And I literally thought to myself, gosh, that's so basic. I hope I don't ever forget to do the same thing. <sighs> Fast forward to last week and I found out that one of my local fish stores had the new fish I wanted for my 20 gallon planted aquarium and at a pretty decent price too. I rushed to set up the quarantine tank before the store closed and while filling up the tank, ended up getting into a um, lively discussion with my husband about the fact that I was setting up yet another aquarium and why was it on the kitchen counter where the clean dishes are supposed to go. Uh, <laughs> so in my haste and distraction, guess what I forgot? Within two days of getting the new fish and starting the quarantine med trio, one of my celestial pearl danios died. Okay, no biggie. It's my first time keeping this fish, so maybe they're more fragile than I thought. So I returned it to the fish store and got another one. But then, the next morning, five more died. I absolutely freaked and nearly made my son late for school. I mean, I did all the basic water quality tests for ammonia, nitrite, nitrates, nothing. I mean, this was a quarantine tank with a cycled filter. Two days shouldn't amount to anything toxic, right? Yeah, lesson one. In the case of massive die-offs, I should have changed the water immediately and removed any untested decor or equipment that was new but I had just added a lot of expensive medication and I didn't want to stop the quarantine process, so that was my first mistake. So chlorine and chloramine, which I'll talk about later, is used to sterilize tap water by killing off harmful microorganisms. When it comes in contact with aquatic animals, it usually destroys their gills and skin first, effectively leading to death by suffocation. Chlorine poisoning usually happens when you add fish to a newly set up tank, which is my case, if you use tap water for water changes or top offs, if you leave the hose running too long while filling up your pond, or if your city decides to suddenly increase the chlorine concentration to battle high bacteria levels and they didn't tell you. Now, I had never seen what chlorine toxicity looks like in fish, but online sources said that the damaged gills will cause the fish to gasp for air at the surface of the water, develop red areas on their bodies and gills, swim about erratically, and ultimately die anywhere from a few minutes to several hours, depending on the chlorine concentration. So let me tell you the symptoms I saw. First off, None of the fish were swimming about, but rather all huddled around the floor of the tank. Uh, unfortunately, these fish were all new species to me, and the internet said that they generally like to swim at the bottom levels of the aquarium, so I figured this was normal behavior for shy fish in a strange environment. Uh, no. <laughs> new healthy fish, at least the nano species that I got, are usually quite active after adding them to a tank because they're scrambling around looking for a safe place to hide. They shouldn't stay at the bottom of the tank like a lead weight. I did see reddish gills in the coolie loaches, but most of the pictures I saw online of them showed pinkish gills, so I didn't really think anything of it. And I did notice the heavy gasping, but that wasn't until day three when I'd already experienced several deaths. So lesson two is I'm not sure I want to use plastic tubs for quarantine tanks anymore. They're not as clear, and it makes it harder to easily see any abnormal symptoms when quarantining new fish. You know who figured out the mystery of the dying new fish? My husband, Mr. Gamer. Seriously, the non-fish keeper in the family was the one who asked me if I had remembered to add that smelly sea chem prime. Oh my goodness, I am so stupid. I literally flushed $70 down the toilet in one go. Out of the 15 fish I bought, three survived. In terms of treatment, it's really touch and go. 
Obviously, I immediately added some dechlorinator because even though chlorine typically gases off in 24 hours, my city also uses chloramine, a more stable compound made of both chlorine and ammonia. And yes, it does require a dechlorinator in order to deactivate it. Some fish will die right away, and others may take a few days to pass. For the survivors, you want to focus on helping them to rebuild their damaged gills and skin by creating a stress-free environment. Feed them lots of good food if they're willing to eat it, like frozen bloodworms, live blackworms or baby brine shrimp for nanofish, and fresh veggies for herbivores. Keep the water quality high by doing multiple small water changes as necessary. Injured or sick fish are likely to be picked on, so provide lots of cover for them to hide behind or entirely remove them to a hospital tank if needed. And finally, keep the water well aerated with a gentle flow by using something like an air stone or sponge filter. In terms of prevention, here's what I'm thinking of changing from now on. First off, I'm gonna make a checklist for water maintenance and new tank setups from now on. I really thought I was experienced enough where, you know, I just memorized all the steps in my head and there's no need to write them down. But even the most veteran fish keepers can make basic mistakes, so why not make the effort to minimize any human error where possible? Second, I actually did have a chlorine test in the form of Tetra 6-in-1 test strips. Yeah, they may not be as reliable, but they're super easy to use and they measure several things that the default API master test kit doesn't cover. So why not use the tools I have? Finally, yes, I did end up buying more fish to replace the ones I lost, but I was super paranoid because what if it wasn't chlorine? I'm pretty sure I forgot to use dechlorinator, but the whole point was I was distracted, so I don't really remember. So this may sound a little cruel, but my cherry shrimp colony has been going gangbusters. So I decided to put a single shrimp into my newly reset up quarantine tank first to make absolutely sure it was safe before adding any more new fish. The shrimp is doing great, the survivors are still alive, and the new fish have no idea the horrible death trap they just avoided. If you don't know how to set up a hospital tank for sick fish, check out my two minute tutorial over here, as well as other helpful beginner videos for freshwater fish. Take time to enjoy your aquariums, and I'll see you in the next video.